Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, I made a claim in an earlier video that platinum group metals came from a, like an asteroid or a meteorite or something like that. So I did some digging because I, I was really interested and I was like, man, I, have, I, I thought I read that somewhere. Here's an article I want to share with everybody. And if you guys are platinum group metal um, junkies, kind of like myself that buys a lot of platinum group metal stuff, well, now you own a piece of outer space. So I'm going to dive in here, just let you guys know what you're buying and where it came from. It's, it's pretty cool, in my opinion. It says the platinum group metals in your car or in your investment stack, more importantly, come from ancient meteorites that bombarded young Earth. You've probably heard of catalytic converters. It's the thing on your exhaust pipe that transforms nasty, unburnt car hydrocarbons into less toxic emissions. But not many of us would know that the origins of catalytic converters are bedded in one of the most violent chapters of Earth's history. When our young planet was under intense bombardment by huge asteroids. See, I was right. It was asteroids and meteorites. Catalytic converters are made from platinum group metals, the rarest metals on our planet, and they have an extraterrestrial origin. Heck yes. Okay, back up. What, what are platinum group metals? Platinum group metals are platinum, palladium, rhodium, iridium, osmium, ruthenium, and rhenium. It's pretty good, guys. I read that pretty quick. They're the seven rarest metals found on the surface of our planet. Uh, together, they make up about some ludicrously low percent or 0.2 millionths of the Earth's crust. These metals, which we'll call PGMs for short, are prized not just for their scarcity, but because of their exceptional catalytic properties and the resistance to chemical corrosion and heat. And their demand is expected to grow in the coming years, with the rise of clean energy technologies and the growing need for things like desalination plants. And what does that have to do with asteroids? Around 4 billion years ago, Earth had formed or recently formed a solid crust and some primitive oceans, and was about 40 degrees Celsius hotter than today. At the time, it was under cataclysmic bombardment from space rocks. We aren't talking about a few falling stars or even a couple of meteor showers, but a torrent of 50 kilometer wide asteroids hitting our planet as often as once a century. For reference, that's roughly the same size as our asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs hitting the Earth about once per human lifetime. Some of these asteroids impacts were so violent they could have vaporized the early seas back into the atmosphere. And they continued to pummel the Earth for a few hundred million years, bringing them uh, bringing with them a precious cargo called platinum group metals. If they were pummeling the Earth, where did all the PGMs go? As you probably noticed, the surface of our planet is not littered with 50 kilometer wide asteroids. Uh, I'm going to skip through a little bit of this here. Uh, plate tectonics are huge slabs of Earth's crusts that fit together like a jigsaw puzzle floating on the mantle. Where those puzzle pieces collide, especially where one piece is denser than the other, the dense one is usually pushed down into the mantle. It goes inward. Where they pull apart, molten lava for forges its way to the surface, cools, and forms the new land. Since the earliest formations of plate tectonics, the surface of our planet has been almost entirely recycled back into the mantle, taking the PGMs with it. Once down there, the PGMs formed alloys with iron and nickel and rained down through the mantle to our dense core. So a lot of the PGMs that hit Earth cycled inward to the Earth. So how are the PGMs on the surface? While there are still some PGMs down in our mantle, they have an extremely high melting point and need to be superheated to enter the magma and make their way to the surface. In the past, this happened through magnesium-rich lavas called, I don't know how to say that, komotites? which are known to have erupted at temperature of more than 1600 C. The only thing is the Earth's interior has been getting cooler and cooler over time, and these super hot magnesium-rich magmas are no longer erupt. So the only place we can find our remains and the PGMs they brought to the surface is in really old parts of the crust, away from plate tectonic boundaries that have been recycled into the mantle a long time ago. It, if that sounds familiar, you're right. That's pretty well describes a lot of Australia. But while Australia has reserves of these metals in regions uh, in, uh, in Western Australia, at present, we only supply 0.1% of the global demand for PGMs. The biggest stash is in the patch of very old crust in South Africa. South African stash near 
Pretoria, north of Johannesburg in South Africa, there's a seven kilometer thick stack of ancient frozen magma called the Bolschveld Complex. The base of this stack is made from comatite magmas. And in the deposit are crystals forming numerous delicate layers that extend over an area 25 times the size of the ACT. While this was clearly a, a huge amount of magma, most of the global PGM supply is concentrated in only two layers, one 30 centimeters thick and the other 100 centimeters thick, within the seven-kilometer pile of crystals. Scientists think it is likely that the layered rocks were formed by many little injections of magma so that each spurt created its own thin pancake-shaped layer of crystals. This means that the platinum group metals were likely concentrated in a complex plumbing system with lots of pipes and little magma pools that we are unable to see today. What does this have to do with us? Well, if you're looking for these rare earth metals closer to home, you'll find them in your catalytic converter of your car exhaust. Your catalytic converter contains a mixture of platinum, palladium, and rhodium in a honeycomb-like grid to maximize the surface area and enhance the exposure of your car, car's exhaust. These rare metals turn carbon monoxide and unburnt hydrocarbons into carbon dioxide and water. While carbon dioxide is by no means an environmentally friendly car emission, it is certainly a lot safer to breathe than your untreated exhaust. Each catalytic converter contains around three to seven grams of uh, platinum group metals, about the size of a 10 cent piece. Although it's the richest stash in the world, the most PGM rich rocks in South Africa still only contain an average of four grams per ton. To get enough platinum group metals for your catalytic converter, miners need to dig up the equivalent of a small hatchback car worth of rock, which may, may, which may seem like a lot of effort for such a small reward. But then again, you're basically driving around with a piece of 4 billion year old meteorite that has been down into the Earth's mantle and come back up again. I wanted to read that to everybody. Um, that's what platinum investment is or PGM investing. Uh, we are investing in extraterrestrial things on earth that migrated into the center of the or into the mantle and came back out <laughs> with magma isn't that crazy i think that's absolutely crazy guys and i wanted to share that with the, the channel uh, i don't do too many of these um but i found this and i thought it was really interesting wanted to share it with everybody and it, it's it's pretty unique to be an owner of of i don't know a large amounts of platinum and, and, and palladium and all these other things. I think that's actually really cool. If you guys like the content, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.